I'm going to be reviewing a paper that is very strong evidence that increasing height after skeletal maturity is possible via mechanical loading. The paper is called Mechanical Strain Leads to Condylar Growth in Adult Rats. Um, mechanical Sprain was it produced by forward mandibular positioning was found to enhance mandibular condylar growth in experimental animals and in patients. Now forward mandibular positioning, it doesn't have to be by device. It could be just you manually moving your jaw forward in a dynamic manner. Um, we see in acromegaly, people's jaws are bigger. And I, I think anecdotally, we see that weightlifters jobs are bigger, but that could be selection bias. So the, the, the animals used were 100 day, 120 day female spray dolly, right? So that's about four months old. That's not ideal. Um, ideally, we'd want six months to prove that it can happen after senescence because rats' growth rate becomes senescence, but senescent, which means that they kind of stop working, but they don't fuse, but it's still, it's still kind of solid. Um, results showed a significant increase in number of replicating mesenchymal cells and proliferation rate. This is very good. The expression of SOX9 was enhanced and called to a, a gene Transcript was then activated. These are all chondrogenic genes. This is very good. The proliferative layer became thicker on experimental day 21. The thickness of chondroblast layer and chondrocyte layer showed significant increase from experimental day 14 to day 30. In conclusion, mechanical strain produced by mandibular advancement in adult rats promotes the proliferation of mesenchymal cells. Young adult patients with undergrowth of the lo lower jaw can be treated with fixed functional appliances, such as the herbs appliance that position the mandib mandible forward and lead to jaw growth. Um, this is a Hertz appliance. Um, you, if you want to know more about it, you kind of watch something on YouTube about it or research more about it, but it basically is a way to dynamically load the jaw and kind of position it forward in a way to produce a pull on the cartilage. Okay. Um, in, in MRI imaging, signs of con condylar remodeling was evident in the post or row superior border of the condyle. This is very, very good. In the adult patients treated with herb suppliance, this would be the result of a reactivation of cells in a precondyloblast model. That, that is absolutely amazing. Reactivation, especially used to, using that word. That means that maybe the growth plate or not the growth plate because there's not really a, a growth plate, but in the articular cartilage. So what could happen is you in, induce art, endochondral os ossification of the articular cartilage and grow gradually taller that way. Um, the thing about the jaw is that it's it is subject to different mechanical loading than the rest. We have to figure out why the jaw can grow and not other parts of the body go because the jaw grows in acromegaly. So w one possible theory is that, that it's due to the mechanical loading that the jaw is subject to. The, the jaw is just sub because the jaw is more movable than say the knee joint. Um, the jaw can move in a lot more dynamic fashion. That's why the jaw can grow. Continuous bite jumping appliances induce me morphological adaptation in the mandible, especially the length of condylar head in adult rats. Further, histological and immunohistochemical studies shows that mandibular advancement reactivates endochondral ossification in the posterior condyle and ultimately results in newborn formation in the condyle. Reactivates endochondral ossification. If, that's, if that doesn't seem amazing to you, then I, I don't know what will. Um, adult rat condyle stops growth or becomes inactive of endochondral ossification. So th that's just amazing because reactivating endochondral ossification. So what you could do, do is reactivate endochondral ossification in the or in, in, make the rate faster in the articular cartilage to induce new high growth. All right, so let's go to the next page. All right, I do okay. Um, each group consisted of nine rats with bite jumping appliances and four untreated controls. Okay, so here's some of the 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 changes in the cells. But he, here is what, what is absolutely amazing, is that, the, see this car, cartilage growth right here? 
that is absolutely amazing. That is, that is a smoking gun that increasing height after skeletal maturity is possible in my view. Um, you can say that the jaw is different. You can say, oh, well, the, the jaw, maybe the cells in the jaw are special. But I, but I, I would say, I would counteract and say maybe this, the cells in the jaw are special is because of the unique mechanical loading that the jaw is subject to. And maybe if we um, induce similar mechanical loading in the other joints of the body, maybe you can get similar results as we do in the jaw. The thickness of cartilage in the posterior condyle is remarkably, remarkably increased by mandibular advancement. So again, I, I want you to look at that again because that, that is just absolutely amazing. That is just amazing there. Um, here you can see the most of the, the thickness happened at a, uh, day 21 and it, it gradually goes down. So that, that probably means that there's some kind of, kind of conditioning effect that occurs. Um, so you'd want to increase the loads is by some mechanism over time to counteract the, the, the ad ad adaptation. But what, what's unclear is why that it, it took 21 days for the, um, for this big peak to happen. You see in day three, it's actually less. So yeah, we like more details in the study to see exactly why there's this big peak at day 21. Um, thickness of proliferator layer, there's that big peak in day 21. So we wanna know why that is. And I don't think the paper kind of, that's kind of unanswered. So ideally we wanna see some more studies on this. Um, again, there's that big peak, but kind of the big peak on day 30. Um, maybe the rats just got better at wearing the appliance at day 21. Maybe there's just sort of like, I, 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 I don't know. In, in the experimental group, there were significant changes observed in all layers. The thickness of fiber layer, fibrous layers shows significant increase from day 14th of mandibular advancement as when maintained from day 30 to day 60. So, yeah, some kind of condition effect. Maybe if we advance the jaw further to agree, maybe we'd get more, more growth there. In the control group, the population of mesenchymal cells showed, revealed no significant differences, whereas the population in that of the mandibular and advancement groups was significantly increased on day 21. Active mandibular advancement enhanced the proliferating rate of the mesenchymal cells in the posterior condyle on experimental days 3 and 21. Um, you can see, again, there's this big peak on tw day 21. Another big peak at day 21. Um, yeah. more, more changes in the cells. You can also see some more histology, more detail of the cartilage growth. This study showed that mandibular advancement in, in adult rats resulted in an increase in condylar growth as measured by significant increase in the number and rate of replicating mesenchymal cells. Um, you know, the fact that they're using adult rats indicates that it probably works on adult patients, but the, the fact that they, they see young adults earlier in the paper kind of does that but the fact that they say reactivation that 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 is very helpful hopeful the the expression of transcription factor sox9 the factor that regulates mesenchymal cell differentiation in the chondroplast thickness of cartilage layers in the experimental group the population size of mesenchymal cells remained unchanged on day three and they increased gradually and reached a peak on day 21 followed by a decline to normal levels on day 60 of advancement. Yeah, I, I don't know why there's this big peak at, at day 21. I, um, yeah, so we, we, want, we want to look at some more studies about that. Thus pointing to the fact that mechanical strain, mechanical strain produced by mandibular advancement led to an increase of cellular pr proliferation, probably as a result of expression of Indian hedgehog. Mandibular advancement changes the biophysical environment in the TMJ and creates a strain alignment in the cells in the condylar tissue that enhances the expression of IHH, the mechanical transition mediator in the condyles. 
so you just have to we just have to mimic this sort of mandibular advancement in the other joints in order to grow taller basically reactivation of chondrocyte differentiation and cartilage cartilage is a template onto which bone will form and there's the, that exists in the articular cartilage. So all we have to do is induce in, endochondral ossification of the articular cartilage and new height will be acquired. In the adult condyle, the amount of cartilage is minimal and limited to two to three or two or three layers of cells. Forward mandibular positioning in adult rats reactivates mesenchymal cells proliferation, chondrocyte differentiation, and chondrocyte formation leading to bone formation in the posterior of the condyle. It's things like that that just amaze me that that a height increase after skeletal maturity is 100% possible, and I don't know how you can see read synthesis like that and not think that. In summary, mandibular advancement in adult rats leads to changes in the biophysical environment that solicits cellular and molecular changes that lead to condylar growth. Um, there, there are other studies that also show that herb supplies can lead to the 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 jaw, new jaw growth. But what, what's unique about this study is this picture right here, which is just like amazing. That's just like the smoking gun. That just like drives me that heart increase is possible. So um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to get in contact with these people. But um, yeah. So, um, yeah, guys, I, I don't know how that image could be fabricated. Um, the only thing I can think of is that to, to think, think of how this study could not be true is that there's a big peak at day 21. So, but how would it be this, so that you would think, may, well, maybe there's something, some other variable other than the bite jumping implies to cause a PP even day 21, but there's nine unique rats. So. In, unless the experiment made that there error in all the rats, then I don't know. But again, this is backed up by anecdotal evidence. Like you see that jaw growth in bodybuilders. You see that jaw growth in acromegaly. So this is all backed. So all we, basically all we have to do is figure out how to mimic this mandibular advancement of the jaw and other joints in order to grow taller. But, and this is pretty, pretty, pretty significant growth. So, yeah, so the purpose of me showing this paper is, is just to inspire you that growing taller is possible. So thank you. Um, if you, if anyone has any questions about any doubts, then just show them to this paper. And if, if they don't think that that this paper is strong evidence, then they're just moving the goalposts because you're, you're proving basically pr this paper basically proves, proves, proves articular cartilage into condyle ossification and you can say well the jaw is different but you know we got to figure out why the jaw is different and apply it to other jaws bones so just be inspired be inspired by this